This video will cover how to replace a water pump and an oil pump on a 2002 5.3 liter Vortex engine. We have the new water pump and gaskets and a thermostat with the o-ring. The new oil pump and seal kit which is an o-ring for the pump screen tube. A new gasket for the oil pan and this one is for the timing chain cover which comes with the shaft seal. And then more water pump gaskets in which they already came with the new water pump as well. We will need a tube of gasket maker. We must have our some oil pans for all the liquids we will be draining. And of course all the new replacement fluids which is oil and radiator coolant. We have a nice tent to give us shade and in case of rain. And the front is up on ramps, emergency brake on, and back wheels chucked and have two jack stands on standby for when we start working under the vehicle. We have some drop lights and a couple of uh, two-step ladders that come in very handy because the truck is way up high right now. To get access to the front of the engine, we need to take out the intake and the upper shroud. But before we begin that, we start draining the radiator fluid. There's a hose clipped to the top of the radiator on the driver's side that needs to be unclipped and make it hang down to the bottom of the vehicle and have a pan ready when you open the peacock valve. And while that's draining, we start to work on top. And by the way, make sure that the top is off on the coolant reservoir. It makes the radiator drain faster. We now start taking off the intake. Using an 8mm socket on a ratchet, unbolt both sides of the intake. Then pull back and lift on the engine side. You can then pull it away from the air filter box and put it aside. We take the plastic engine cover off. To take off the top shroud, start with the two bolts on top. And with a trim tool, you can pry off the four plastic rivets, two on each side. Just lift the center pin and the rivet will come right out. Unclip any hoses and hold them out of the way as you pull the shroud out. We're going to use a C-clamp with a rubber boot that makes contact with the top of the belt and clamps to the water pump pulley preventing it from turning while loosening the fan. We use an adjustable wrench to loosen the fan bolt and then spin the fan off by hand the rest of the way. Also using a pipe with the adjustable wrench makes it a lot easier. With the clutch fan removed, we took off the C-clamp. Now we can remove the drive belt. Placing a 15mm socket on the belt tensioner, rotate clockwise to loosen the serpentine belt and pop it off one of the pulleys. Then release the tensioner and remove the belt. With a ratchet and 15mm socket, we removed the bolts holding the tensioner. Before we take any hoses off, we take down the skid plate under the vehicle and place the pans in place to catch the fluids. We take off the lower radiator hose at the thermostat housing, using pliers to release the clamp and slide it back. Then by twisting and pulling it, the hose should come off and tuck it out of the way. Now we remove the two bolts from the thermostat housing. Fluid will come out. Remove the clamps from the two heater hoses and pull them out of the water pump. Loosen the clamp from the radiator upper hose and pull it off. Next we remove the six 10mm bolts off the water pump pulley. You will see three on each side. 
If the bolts are not the same exact length, make sure you organize them to go back in the same place you removed them from. Once they're all loose, pull the water pump off and let it drain before putting it to the side. Match it with the new pump by putting them side by side and do the same with the thermostat. Loosen the oil drain plug from the pan and slowly take it off while positioning the pan. Loosen the oil filter and take it down to the pan until drained and store it in a bag for proper disposal. Using a 3-8 socket on the bar, turn the AC belt tensioner clockwise and pull the belt off the pulleys. Using a half inch high torque impact to take off the bolt on the harmonic balancer. If using a battery type impact like this Dewalt, make sure it's fully charged, it will take it off. Now we set up the special puller to get the harmonic balancer off the crankshaft. This is a three jaw puller, you can order from Amazon, I'll put the link below if you need it. It comes with four lengths of forcing rods a forcing screw with a 3 8 inch square drive for use with a ratchet and a 3 quarter inch hex for wrench or socket use. The forcing rod will insert into the shaft where the bolt was. The three jaws will hook on the three slides behind the harmonic balancer and as you tighten the forcing screw with the ratchet it forces the harmonic balancer to slide off the crankshaft. Make sure you line up the jaws on the slots and hand tighten the forcing screw before you attach the ratchet. As you slowly tighten it with the ratchet, you will eventually hear a snap. That's telling you the balancer has broken away from the shaft. That's awesome. And as you continue to turn it, it's sliding off the shaft until it's completely off. So be ready to catch it, it's pretty heavy. And there it is. Pull it out of the shaft and take the forcing rod out of the puller. Okay, we're now ready to take down the timing chain cover. There's eight bolts around the front of the cover and two more under the cover bolted from the pan. We start with the bolt on the bottom left of the cover that will need to be unbolted with a 10 millimeter open end. And the rest, we use a 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch Dewalt impact driver. Then take down the two on the bottom, bolt it to the pan. Now you can take the cover off by sliding it from the crankshaft. We will clean that later. Then we can take the four bolts off the oil pump. But first, we need to take the oil pan down so we can get to the pickup tube bolted to the pump. You can see it exposed there, and some people actually go crazy getting it off without taking the oil pan down. But we want to take it down. To take a good look at the pickup tube screen and the inside bottom of the pan. To be able to take off the oil pan, we need to take down this cross member. Keep in mind this is a two wheel drive so there's not much to take out of the way to be able to drop the pan. 
there's four nuts and bolts to take off. Using a high power impact with an 18 millimeter open end, we start taking it down. Once that's out of the way, there's all around access to the pan. The first thing is to take off everything attached to it. Like the transmission line bracket bolted to the passenger side of the pan. And the wire connector to the oil sensor needs to be unclipped with a curved pick tool. Insert the pick and lift the clip, pull in the plug at the same time and it will come off. Now the pan bolts can be unbolted using a 10 mm socket on a quarter inch impact driver. Two back bolts coming from the transmission housing are the longest and you may want to put those on the side, not to confuse them with the rest. Slowly lower the pan to the ground. There's the pickup tube screen and pipe going all the way to the oil pump in which it's held by one 10 millimeter bolt. That's where our O-ring is. Take off the one bolt from the pump first. We are going to remove the pickup tube to make sure the screen is nice and clean and replace the O-ring before we install it in the new pump. Take out the other two bolts that are still holding the pickup tube and it will come off. This is the pickup tube end that inserts into the pump sealed by the uh, green o-ring. The oil pan is not that bad. The inside bottom is not too dirty with solids. We will clean everything before the reinstall. Now back to the pump. We can easily slide it out now that the pickup tube is no longer bolted to it. Match it up with the new pump. Made in Canada. Cool. And it's time to clean all the areas where the new seals will be installed and clean all the parts. A razor blade and brake cleaner is the best and quickest way to get all the crusty deposits off. The better it's clean, the less chances of leaks. We line up the new oil pump onto the shaft. It's a lot easier if the slots are lined up before you slide it in. You need to play with it a little bit. We put back the four bolts to the pump and tighten them. The pickup tube is all cleaned including the screen. Take off the uh, old o-ring and replace it with the new one. The pan is all scraped and cleaned. And the bottom of the engine cleaned up as well. Before putting back the pickup tube, make sure the o-ring has been oiled all around so it will slip into the oil pump without damaging it. Start by putting in the back bolts and leave them loose. Next insert the end with the o-ring into the oil pump. Put in the 10 mm bolt through the pickup tube bracket and screw it into the oil pump. While making sure the o-ring is lined up without it being pinched. Damaging the o-ring will make the engine lose oil pressure. Now finish tightening the other two bolts holding the pickup tube. 
we get the pan ready with the gasket using the gasket maker to fill in each corner also called the contact points these are grooves on the engine blocks that line up the pan to the block where some need to be applied as well Carefully line up the pan to the engine block without disturbing the gasket. Insert a bolt on each side to hold the pan up. And then insert the rest of the bolts, leaving the two rear long bolts for last. After tightening all the bolts around the pan, reinsert the oil sensor plug and bolt the transmission lines bracket back on the pan. Time to install the timing chain cover. But first we clean the gasket area, punch out the old seal and we installed the new one. Loop the edge of the seal and cover and with a rubber mallet get the seal started around the edges then using a flat piece of wood and mallet hammer the seal all the way in. Be very careful not to damage it. Place the gasket on the cover loop the seal to ensure a smooth fit on the shaft the harmonic balancer. Put some gasket maker on the bottom corners where the cover meets the pan gasket. Carefully line up and slide the cover onto the shaft and then line up the two bolts and screw them in. Then put in the rest of the bolts around the cover. As we look from the bottom of the cover, as the bottom bolts get tightened, you can see the two pan bolts underneath lining up. Once aligned, insert the two bolts and tighten them. You want to tighten these two pan bolts going from the pan into the cover before the ones on the top cover so the bottom edge of the cover is nice and tight against the pan gasket. Once all the bolts are tight around the cover, the harmonic balancer goes back on the shaft. Slowly tap each side to get it started and then keep hitting it alternating top, bottom, left and right. As it goes into the shaft, Keep trying the bolt to see if it reaches the thread in the shaft. Once you get enough thread on the bolt, use the half inch high torque impact to finish tightening it until it reaches the inside of the seal. Looks like it went right in the seal, baby. Reinstall the AC belt from the harmonic balancer to the compressor pulley. And with brake cleaner on the rag, wipe down the gasket areas again before installing the water pump. Line up the new gaskets on the water pump and insert the bolts to hold them aligned. Line up the bolts and, and tighten.
set your torque wrench at 12 foot-pounds and torque each 10 millimeter bolt around the water pump. Next, install the new thermostat by carefully lining up the o-ring. Screw in the two 10mm bolts and tighten. Reinsert the radiator hose into the thermostat and the two heater hoses and reposition all the clamps. Reinstall the tensioner on the water pump and tighten the two 15mm bolts. Then reinstall the serpentine belt following the diagram on your manual or from a picture you took before taking it off. Once it's on all the pulleys, Turn the tensioner clockwise and release once the belt is on the pulley. Screw the fan to the water pump pulley and tighten after clamping the belt to the water pump pulley again. Take off the clamp. and install the upper shroud by reinstalling the two top bolts in four clips at the bottom shroud. Reinsert the top hose to the water pump and tighten the strap. Clip on all the hoses to where they originally were. Reinstall the air intake and tighten both sides. Bolt the plastic cover back on. Before screwing in the new oil filter, oil the top seal for spoo tightening and pre-fill the filter with oil. Do not over tighten it. And the same goes for the pan oil plug. Put in 6 quarts and later add as needed. Before refilling the radiator, make sure the peacock valve is closed and the hose tucked away into the clip on the driver's side of the radiator. Don't be afraid to overfill the with coolant because the whole system has to be refilled besides the radiator. Listen to that wolf howling on a full light of the moon. No ticking and the oil pressure holding at 50 while on idle. As of September 2020, at 266,607 miles. Originally my truck. It has been my son's for the last 15 years and it keeps on ticking. He loves doing mechanic work too. The next day, we finish by cleaning and reinstalling the cross member and skid plate. Test drive it and add oil and coolant as needed. Continue to check for any leaks in the next few days, just in case. I know we probably skipped or not mentioned some minor things to keep this video under 30 minutes, but I hope this video gives you an idea of what's involved doing a job like this. 
and if you have any questions feel free to ask on the comments and check the description for links of all the parts and tools we used. You all have a great day.